Now, today I'm going to crack on, going to crack on with the Telecaster comparison. Five different guitars. <laughs> Five different sounds. So which is the best? I can't say one's better than the other. Um, even if you push me, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say it. Depends what you like looking at and what you like hearing. What I would like to do is make a parts caster of the favourite bits or my favourite bits from, from this bunch of guitars. So I'll tell you what that is. Hello, thanks for joining us. Welcome to the Guitaristas. Good to see you. Now, today I'm going to crack on, going to crack on with the Telecaster comparison. Uh, we're going to look at five T-style guitars that we've reviewed on the channel just this year. It started, well, it started with this, didn't it? The Squire CV 60s uh, FSR Custom Telecaster. And there's a GNL ASAT Classic Tribute. We've got the Sire T7. Tokai ATE 52, this one. And of course, the real deal. The Fender Player Telecaster. So each of these guitars has been reviewed in some detail on the channel. All the links are in the description box. Okay, so if there's anything I don't cover today, you'll, you'll find it there, I'm, I'm pretty certain. Um, what we're going to do today is we're going to compare stuff like the weights, the neck profiles and measurements, pick up readings, and we're going to hear them. We're going to hear them all quite a lot in, in various settings and uh, see... We'll see if they sound like Telecasters, I suppose, and uh, see which one we like and which we don't like. I mean, they're all good. So let's start with uh, the Squire CV. You know, beautiful looking guitar. That's why I bought this one. I couldn't, I couldn't resist. Uh, they call this the Olive Green, and this is a limited edition. And I paid... I think I did pay three ninety nine, and it's there's some available. <laughs> Have a look. Uh, what a great guitar! The body is made of what they call niato. Um, I think that's ash pronounced, which is a a wood. <laughs> I don't know much more about it than that. It's got a maple neck, and this one has got an Indian laurel fingerboard. Three hundred ninety nine pounds. <laughs> This one here is the GNL ASAT or ASAT, however you want to pronounce it. Uh, tribute, classic or classic tribute. This one, it's um, it's a thing, isn't it? Three hundred and ninety-nine pounds again, and you can um, or you can still get these, no problem. This has got a poplar body and a maple neck, Canadian maple, I think they say that was three hundred and ninety-nine pounds. And then there was the Tokai. This is the ATE 52. Uh, this one, they're a little bit harder to get hold of. I found a couple on eBay, new, but there you go. 549 pounds seems to be the asking price now. Alder body, this one, and again, a maple neck. <laughs> The Sire T7, these are popular, aren't they? They seem to be, that's for sure. Again, this has got an alder body, roasted maple neck with rolled fingerboards, this one. Uh, and these cost £499. <laughs> I thought it was only fair to <laughs> let Fender join the party. So this is their entry level 
Telecaster the player. This, well, this is a maple neck one with an alder body. These generally, they're around about 600, often a little bit more than that. The, um, the Pal Ferro fingerboard one goes for, well, you can get them, shall I say, for £549. The difference being with between this and all the others is this doesn't have an ashtray bridge. It's got this, you know, block saddle, flat style, whatever they call it. <laughs> So let's compare the weights, starting with the Squire, £7.13, a 3.54 kilos, the GNL, £7.10, 3.46 kilos, the Tokai. Seven pound nine, three point four three kilograms. The sire, seven pound twenty-five, three point four six two. The and the fender player, seven pound ten. Or 3.46. So they're all, well, they're all pretty damn close, aren't they? Sire is the heaviest. <laughs> Let's have a look at these pickup readings. Loads of information. Uh, put it on hold and have a look and try and decipher that. Can you attribute those numbers to how the guitars sound at all? I don't know. I don't know. But there's the info for you, nerds.
Okay, so let's have a look at the net profiles and measurements. Now here they are, all up on the screen. There's a lot of information there, so go and grab your reading glasses, stick it on a big screen, pause it, and, and, and make what you will of, of all this, really. Um, they're very similar. Really, all I can comment on is that the Tokai and the GNL both seem to be a little bit more clubby at the 12th fret. And they all feel good. So I don't necessarily think that the feel of the neck would dramatically influence your buying decision. Right, so by now you'll have heard each guitar back to back on identical settings. Did a bit of Zep and we did a bit of Sid Barrett, didn't we? And the guitars were on the identical settings there. Quick cuts so you could hear the difference. And, and there is a little bit of difference, isn't there, between these guitars. This bit, I thought I'd just quickly talk about each one um, and, and how they feel, I suppose, as well. This Squire Classic Vibe, this is, is like a... Uh, it's... <laughs> I'm, I'm speechless. What am I trying to say? It's just like a Telecaster, isn't it? It's like, it's like a Telecaster should be. It's like a Telecaster should sound. I think that makes sense, you know what I mean? It's very bright. And, uh, and on the bridge of the neck, <laughs> the neck pickup, you know. I don't think the pickups are great on this. But that definitely could be better, couldn't it? Um, but it's, you know, it's um, it's done at a cost, these pickups. So feel-wise, it's great. It's got a fabulous neck on it. And, um, uh, uh, you know, it, it's just good. It's just good for the money anyway. You know, it's just really good for the money. I really like this, yeah. The G&L here. It's quite a thing, this. It's quite a thing. So, right, firstly, the neck feels fine. I mean, as, as we've seen by now anyway, <laughs> depending what order I cut this film, the neck profiles and measurements are all really similar. So, but it's nice, nice, you know, smooth maple neck. You know, fret job's fine. Fret job on all these is fine. But I think this one stands out for the pickup. I think it's probably the pickups. It sounds very much more high fidelity is the way I'm going to describe it. Really ballsy. You can hear that straight away. There's a lot of output coming out here. It's really pushing the amp. Let's try that neck. You can hear the difference between that and the Squire, can't you? It's very nice, this. Very nice. Very nice. I, like, I really like this Six Saddle Ashtray Bridge as well. Nice guitar. Let's put the Sire up next. Uh, there's going to be <laughs> loads of people out there rooting for this. They want this to be head and shoulders above everything else. It's got a really, you know, a lot of fans, this this range from Sire. And, well, look, I, quite rightly so. Um, I loved this guitar when I reviewed it. Um, how does it stack up against the others now? Well, it's <laughs> it's very bright. It's brighter, I think, than all the others. And again, it's, it's ballsy, isn't it? But yeah, definitely bright, really bright, this. 
The neck, again, it's, well, it's almost identical to most of the others. I think it's exactly identical to the Fender, this one. This, of course, has got, well, this roasted maple neck and massive frets. <laughs> the frets look massive. Um, and locking tuners. Um, I'm not really fussed about all that, to be honest with you. This isn't my favourite neck of the bunch. We'll talk about that later. But it's nice. It's nice high-end appointments. If you like that sort of thing, you know, it's, it's tough to beat on value. Given that it does sound good, maybe a little bit too bright for my liking, actually. But you can dial it back, can't you? So that's what the tone control's for, isn't it? So nice guitar. And the Tokai here. Um, this sounds different, doesn't it? This sounds a lot darker than the others. I'll try and show you. A lot muddier. And the neck. Distinctly woolly compared to the others. Um, it's nice, it's more like a Les Paul really. And obviously when we put in the the gain on like that. It's got a nice thing going on, but it's a little bit different. Uh, the neck on this is a little bit chunkier than the others, chunkiest I think. Um, the, what I have noticed about this as well, I didn't, I don't think I mentioned this in the review, the nuts cut quite high, and I've noticed that because when I'm playing open D chords, I'm having a problem with the tuning there. It's a bit, it's bending it sharp, I think. In tune, very sharp. So that needs, um, that needs salting. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's probably my least favourite. And the Fender Player. <laughs> it's nice. Like the Squire, this has got more of a Telecaster sound than the other, the other three. That's what you'd expect, isn't it? That's that fucking knob again. I'll put that in my pocket. Again, I think could do with a better better neck pickup maybe this apart from that as I've said before I'm not a fan of the flat bridge but I must say you know can being able to compare it it doesn't seem to have any particular detriment to the telecaster ness does it um, Nice and bright. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, I like it.
go. There's something for everyone, isn't there? Yeah, all great, all great. They all, I mean, there's quite a lot of differences there in the sound. I think we've heard enough now to, to firmly establish that. I was quite surprised, actually, how different some of them sound compared to others. I don't think, I don't think any of them are, sound the same. Even, I'd say, the, the, the Squire here, I was going to point because that's in front of me, and the, and the Fender are closest. That's, maybe that's the pickups because maybe the pickups are closest. Um, hang on. I've got the readings here. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna see if that's even a thing. No, it's not even a thing. The pickups are wildly different on the the Fender and the Squire. Well, for some reason, I thought that the Fender and the Squire sounded closest. The others are, are all over the place, really. So the combinations here of the the pickups, the hardware, the tone woods, you know, obviously it all makes a difference, doesn't it? You know, you can't just say, oh, it's this or that. Five different guitars. <laughs> Five different sounds. I mean, you know, within a, within a ballpark. I mean, they all did the twang. Uh, the the, the Tokai was a bit different, wasn't it? But anyway, well, you be the judge anyway. Don't rely on my ears. There's plenty of playing done, and there's a bit more to come for you to have a listen compare them back to back and let me know your thoughts. Which did you prefer? Because, well, that'll, what, what I said, there's something for everyone because what you prefer is entirely subjective, isn't it? Um, you, might, you, might like, you might like the sound of the, of the, of the, of the <laughs> sorry, of the Tokai. I didn't not like it, I liked it. But it, was, it wasn't what I expected when compared to the others, which were just a little bit more brighter. Anyway, um, <laughs> where does this take us? So five great affordable guitars. Now, let me just clarify what I mean by affordable. All of these guitars in the four to six hundred pounds price range which, um, you know, it's still a lot of money. And there have been a couple of comments, actually, people saying, you know, who's that affordable for? Yeah, it's a lot of money still. But in, in you know, an age where guitars are routinely costing 1,000, 3,000, 5,000, 10,000, and 20,000 pounds, four to 600 pounds is fair to say affordable. Uh, and it's great to discover that an affordable guitar also buys you a fully formed guitar. You know, there's all of these guitars, are, are, I'm confident to say that all of these guitars um, are, are, are professional level. You know, they, they play professionally. You don't have to, you know, there were no, there were no problems with any of the frets or anything. You could take any of these guitars out, plug them in, gig with them without any issue. Um, you know, the Fender, all right, you'd have to stick the knob tip back on or you'd lose that. But beyond that, I think they were all perfectly good guitars, good playable gigging guitars. So that's a good thing, you know, affordable guitars, you know, it, it, it's all you really need. You know, you don't really need to spend any more than that. So which is the best? <laughs> Entirely subjective, isn't it? Depends what you like looking at and what you like hearing. They're all good. They're all playable. So there's nothing wrong with any of them. Um, but which is the best? Well, what I was thinking was I would, what I would like to do is make a parts caster of the favourite bits or my favourite bits from, from this bunch of guitars. So I'll tell you what that is, okay? I'll tell you what, what my favourite bits of these guitars are. So, well, it starts with the body, doesn't it? With the, uh, the Squire classic vibe. Because this started it. I bought this one because of the gas. I saw this and I thought, I have to have it. It's a, it's a Telecaster Custom, uh, and it's, it's in olive green. <laughs> so, yeah, definitely the body from the Squire. The neck, there's a few options here. <laughs> there's a few options. Could even be the Tokai, because that's kind of chunkier, but in the final analysis, I didn't think so. 
a lot of you are screaming the sire. It's got to be the sire. It's got a roasted maple neck with rolled fingerboards. But I'm not... No, that's not the one for me, personally. As nice as it feels, and it does feel nice, I don't like the look of it, personally. For me, it's the Fender. It's the good old traditional Fender. It just feels right. And of course, <laughs> I'm very shallow. It looks right. You know, it, it has got the right name on the headstock. So I'd go for the Fender neck. Now, pickups. So pickup wise, I, well, I thought that the Squire pickups were perhaps the least impressive. Uh, it's interesting that because, you know, as a as a whole package, the Squire, Classic Vibes, you know, the whole range are great. But it was interesting comparing that to, you know, like for like, if you like, like for like or side by side with others. Um, they just lacked a little bit of something. The Fender ones sounded great. The readings of these, well, all of these pickups were all over the place, so... You know, I don't even think that we can begin to try and work out why. But the Fender pickup sounded nice. But for me, I think the GNLs, there's something about these, isn't there? Let's see if I can hook that on the edge. Something about these pickups, uh Yeah. Well we well we know they're they're made differently. We know that Leo designed these after he he did he yeah, he designed these, didn't he? So, you know, uh, maybe yeah, an improvement something really wide range about them they're like they sound like wide range single coils to me but yeah they're good yeah okay so that's body neck pickups bridge well it ain't gonna be the this one is it let's get rid of that Tokai and squire are the same so we can leave the squire on the table here um so the difference is here. Well, in fact, you've got, yeah, three three eras, really. The original three brass saddles were the original Fender design. These ones on the side are compensated, so they're a, a modern improvement on that. And then, and then, in fact, yeah, 60s, they had steel saddles, which would look something like that on the uh, Squire here. And then in the 70s, Fender introduced six individually intonatable brass saddles. The like of what they've got on this GNL. And these are my favourites. These are these are these are the ones. These are the ones I'd have. This whole thing. Ashtray Bridge, six individual brass saddles. That's all you need. What else is there? Tuners. Oh, a lot of people would say. All the locking ones off the sire, you've got to have them. I'm not fussed about locking tuners, to be honest with you. I think they look a bit cumbersome. Uh, I prefer the vintage style ones, like is on the uh, Squire here. So, yeah, vintage, old style, Cluson tuners. That's what I'd have. Um, so that's it, I think, isn't it? Yeah, that would be my parts caster. I mean, I'm not going to do that, obviously. I'm not going to do that. Um, reason being, I'm going to sell most of these. I'm going to sell most of these. I'm going to keep the Squire. I'm going to keep the Squire CV um, because that was the that was the one that I bought. You know, because of the gas, <laughs> I needed to have it. The others I did kind of buy for review. I did specifically buy them all for review. I think so. I'm going to move them on. I'm going to list all of these others on my reverb shop at the end of this film, okay? So, links in the description box. If you fancy any of these, um, you know, I'll do you a good deal. They all need to go to a better home. And I'm going to spend the money on another Telecaster Roundup. Now, um, budget, yeah. I'm not going to say cheap. Budget Telecasters. So there's a whole, that's a whole range, isn't there? I'm going to get, <laughs> I'm going to aim to get Jet, Harley Benton, obviously, Faisley, is that a thing? Faisley, and um, some. I made a hang on. I made some notes. Oh, Squire Affinity, yeah, Squire. Sire T three, 
It's another one. These are, a, I think these are up to 300 pounds. That'll be my benchmark there. That'll be my cutoff, okay? I'm gonna get several more tellies up to about 300 quid and do this all again, um, because it'll be a laugh, and, and, it, and it gives me a rich seam of content to mine over <laughs> a couple of months. So that'll be next. So yeah, um, I'm keeping the Squire. Sorry, you can't have that. If you fancy one of the others, then yeah, have a look, you know, get on there quick. Um, I'm not gonna ship these abroad because it's ridiculous. You can buy one yourself. It's, I mean, I will ship them abroad if you wanna pay the silly silly cost of it, but um, that's entirely up to you. I just thought I'd say, I'll list them um, internationally with ridiculous shipping prices so that you can see, you know, if you're in the States, you'll be able to see how much I'm selling the guitar for, but it'll be like 300 quid with 300 pounds shipping, you know, and obviously I don't expect you to buy it, but. You know, you're welcome to if you want. Anyway, um, yeah, so I'm going to do that. So check the uh, check the re my reverb shop and see see if they're still for sale by the time you've watched this nonsense. Um, what else? There was one other question that a few people have asked: GNL or Sire? Yeah, it's a, it's a, and I can see why because they're they're. They're kind of like both improved T-Styles, I think. You know, they've both taken the design and they've taken it, or well, tried to take it to the next level. I think they both succeeded in that. Um, so people are saying, oh, which, which one? Which one? Again, I can't tell you. You've, got, you've really got to go for what one appeals to you, which one tickles your fancy. I can tell you what I would go for the GNL because... Uh, because it's it's more authentic. That's the that's is that the only reason? Well, I know because I like prefer the pickups as well. I suppose the sire it's quite bright, but then there are other things on the sire that that you might prefer, locking tuners, roasted maple neck. You know, there's there's no dispute in the fact that it's a beautiful neck if you like that sort of thing. So I'm sorry that hasn't been very helpful at all, has it? You decide, right? You're not going to go wrong with either of them. You know, if you if you like, I can't say one's better than the other. Um, even if you push me, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say it because it depends. Depends what you like, doesn't it? So yeah, sorry, it wasn't very helpful, was it? That's it for this week. Um, I hope you've enjoyed watching that as much as I've enjoyed making it. Um, I love. Yeah, it's great to have a jam on a whole bunch of guitars and. Uh, get to know him a little bit better. And uh, I'm really relieved because I finally, <laughs> I finally put to bed this, this affordable Telecaster comparison and I can now move on and do something else. So thanks for watching. Um, come back next week, same time, same place, and see what we're up to then. Well, I look forward to it. Cheers for now. Ta-da.